A pleasant afternoon to each and everyone. I am Montessa Marie Estaliada, and for today's video, I will discuss to you the inflows and outflows in economics. So are you guys ready? So come on, let's get started. But before we will dive into the main topic, let us know first the learning objectives of this video. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to Define what is inflows and outflows in economics. Identify the importance of inflows and outflows reflecting in the circular flow of economic activities. And lastly, understand how to compute GDP in relation to the economic activity. The all-pervasive economic problem is that of scarcity which is solved by three institutions or decision-making agents of an economy. They are households or individuals, firms, and government. They are actively engaged in three economic activities of production, consumption, and exchange of goods and services. These decision makers act and react in such a manner that all economic activities move in a circular flow. The circular flow model demonstrates how money moves through society. Money flows from producers to workers as wages and flows back to producers as payment for products. In short, an economy is an endless circular flow of money. Now let's start with the fundamental concept of circular flow of economic activities reflecting the inflows and outflows which is the two basic economic units. These are the first, the household, which is the primary consuming unit. They are the one who buys the goods and services in exchange for money. And the business firms, which are the basic producing unit, for example, a manufacturing company. These two are basically found in the circular flow of economic activities. Before we will discuss the inflow and outflows, let's talk about how these two units works or function in a circular flow of economic activities. These two basic units need each other as shown in a diagram. As we already know, the household needs to purchase goods and services from the business firm. Thus, there is the payments of the said outputs. On the other hand, the business firms needs to acquire economic resources, for example, in the form of labor and capital from the household. Thus, there goes the payment of the said inputs in the form of wages and salary. If you look at the picture, you can see that there is a process of inflow and outflow. Outflow means a movement of large amounts of money or large number of people from one place to another. Well, outflows is an amount of something, such as money or goods, that comes into a place. If you look at the arrows, you can see the light color, which is the movement of money, and the dark color is the movement of goods and services, as well as economic resources. So what is inflows in economic activities? These are the factors that increases the level of economic activity. This includes investments, government spending, and exports. While outflows in economic activities are factors that decreases the level of economic activity. This includes savings, taxes, and imports. The pictures show that the household and the business firm is dependent with each other. Or shall we say that the income of the business firms is considered as the expenses of the household. On the other hand, the income of household is the expenses of the business firms. So do you understand the idea? It's just a vice versa of give and take relationship. You will get a product from me, so you will pay for it. I will work for you, so you will pay for it. Just like that. So I hope it is clear to you. So what will happen if the household will save? Precisely, the income of the business firm will be reduced. Since the money intended to buy goods and services from the business firm will be diverted to the savings of the households. However, if the household will save up money through the bank, then the bank will allow the business firm to borrow money for investment 
then the circular flow is okay or in good condition. There is still the flow of money. But please be reminded that the bank is also a business firm. We just separate it for discussion purposes only. Another thing, if the household will pay taxes, then the money intended to buy goods and services will be again reduced. However, if the government will use the paid taxes to the right projects, for example, road widening, this will serve as government expenditure. Then the money will revert it back to the basic economic unit. Since the government will purchase cement, hollow blocks, steel bars, and other construction supply from the business firm to be specific in a hardware nationwide. So again, the circular flow is going fine. Lastly, if the household will decide to purchase imported products, then the sales of the local goods and services will again reduce and our money will go to the other country as form of export, as shown in the diagram. So as a summary, the outflows such as savings, taxes, and imports could reduce economic activity. Why? Because basically, these three factors could interrupt or slow down the flow of economic activity within a specific country. Since savings, taxes, and imports are the money not being used for consumption, which means it is not being injected into the economy, classifying it as a leakage. However, inflows such as investments expenditures and exports could increase economic activities. Why? Simply because these three factors serve as injections to the flow of economic activity. So it will serve as add factors. That is why it is said that inflows could increase or amplify the performance of the country's economy. And take note, when you look at the figure, we can say that these outflows and inflows are in respect to the basic economic unit. However, if we try to consider the government as the storage dump of the outflows and inflows, we can say that its inflow is the taxes and the outflow is expenditure. So it is important to determine the right amount of inflow and outflow. It should be balanced. If in case inflow is greater than outflow, then time will come that there will be a spillover. So there is a wastage of resources. But if there is a greater outflow compared to inflow, then we can expect a shortage of resources or the problem of scarcity. Knowing that inflow and outflow must be balanced or equal, with this diagram, we can determine how to get the amount of gross domestic product in our country. So how to compute the gross domestic product in the economic activities, reflecting the inflows and outflows? First, from the household, we can determine the consumption. Then from the business firm, we can determine the investments. Then from the government, we can determine the government spending. And from the foreign countries, we can determine the net export or export minus import. In all consideration, this consumption, investment, and government spending and export minus import is the formula in getting the gross domestic product, which is known as the final expenditure approach. I hope you learned the idea of inflows and outflows in the circular flow of economic activities. If not, you can ask me or clarify during our Google meeting. Thank you for listening.